moving forward, what well, might say it's all about me, 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 me. No? I haven't heard that one. You haven't heard that song? What's good, good people? I'm Obio, and in case you didn't know, I'm the G in LGBTQ, and you're watching It's Just Not Adding Up. So get in here and act like you got some sense. We're about to create some space. I set healthy boundaries and others respect them. I shine bright in every room that I enter. I manifest. Bold and confident describe me. I have the power to inspire the world. My truth is my superpower. I have a great opinion of myself. I am the one that I've been looking for. That's a joke, I like that one. I'm stubborn in my values. Opportunities find me. There is no room for judgment in my life. I'm constantly building good habits. I'm mentally tough. I'm a dynamic communicator. I'm a strategic thinker. Money comes to me easily. I'm proud of me. I'm thankful for feeling loved and being loved. I am one of one. I'm the only one. <laughs> my energy is contagious. I'm a catch. My gifts make room for me. I make wise financial decisions. I get better every single day. I am art. I create art. I appreciate art. I love art. I marvel at creation. I'm thankful to the creator. I'm an asset. I have an exceptional vocabulary. I'm unapologetically me. I set healthy boundaries and others respect them. I'm a problem solver. I'm kind to myself and I'm kind to others. I respect my journey and my path. I'm peaceful. I will learn something new today. I live in my truth. I do everything with intention. I have deprioritized others' opinion of me. I dismiss negative thoughts. I'm defined by my character, not my past or my problems. I'm a light in this world. My energy is protected and my karma is beautiful. So my, I guess, number one piece of advice or a nugget to chew on is prioritize yourself. Once you prioritize yourself, then you start to learn yourself, mm -hmm. pay attention to yourself, yeah. start to um, identify what makes you tick, what makes you happy, what you, what you like, what you don't like, what type of energy uh, is not welcome in your space. You start to learn that when you start to prioritize yourself and not think about what everyone else needs all the time. And I think step three, I guess we're just gonna step it out you here. <laughs> so I guess part three for that is you learn how to set boundaries. Yeah. Cause I think you then kind of go on that exploration and you find this doesn't yes. work for me. So how do I communicate what doesn't work for me? What does that sound like? What does that look like? What, how do I, you know, cause even for myself, I had a lot of expired relationship left. Mm -hmm. After yeah. coming into my fullness, I was like, oh, when I was in shame, this made sense. Yeah. But I'm not in shame anymore and this doesn't make sense. I think one of the challenges with our community, mm -hmm. and, and when I say our community, I'm thinking more broadly as like brown people, okay, yeah. black people. For sure. The challenge that we have is we have, a lot of us have that ride or die mentality, mm -hmm. right? Which means I'm gonna ride for you until the wheels fall off, mm -hmm. but that doesn't help us grow. Right. If you're having somebody that's pulling you down, but you're like, I'm a ride or die with this person, they're going to you're going to die. Right. Literally. Like, you're literally going to die because this person is no longer bringing you value or fruit. And so you have to be OK. But as you start to set those boundaries, I mean, I've had to set those boundaries with family, with friends. Yeah. Like, you're not going to yeah. be calling me all the time with your problems. Right. So then when when I start when I start responding differently, when I start asking, OK, now uh, you've called me with this issue. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Putting it back into their hands. Guess what they stopped doing? Calling me with their issues. I think another part of that also is forgiveness. Yeah. For and forgiving yourself. Yeah. And that's, to me, more difficult. For me, it was more difficult. Yeah. Like, to forgive myself for certain mistakes I made. To forgive myself for even being in shame as long as I was in the shame. Forgive myself for things that I did as a byproduct of the shame. Like, mm -hmm. all those things. Getting into that nitty gritty of what does forgiveness look sound and feel like and a lot of times i think on the other side of forgiveness you really do find compassion and empathy and you'll realize that that compassion and empathy looks a lot different than you thought it looked mm -hmm. you thought compassion and empathy was making room for everybody else always but to realize compassion and empathy has a lot to do with setting those boundaries a lot to do with prioritizing yourself a lot to do with i i don't have the capacity for this anymore yeah i've been saying this so often but my prayer last year to god was show me how much i can carry I really needed to know because my entire life, I based my capacity on the capacity of others. If Stan said it was hard, then it was hard. If Stan said it was heavy, then it was heavy. But I never even looked to see if it was going to be hard or heavy 
for me. Yeah. And I think for me, on the opposite side of forgiveness, I finally had permission to seek, like, oh, well, I, that is not true for me anymore. And I can show up differently, and I can then expect different, and I can go out and seek different. Does that make sense? Yeah. That was heavier than I wanted it to be. I feel like we just took a turn here. You do have to forgive yourself, and even in those spaces where you're like, where you know that you haven't honored the person that you desire to be, when you know that you have allowed for people to run over you, when you know those things. And it's it, there's this moment when you're just kind of like, the hell wrong with me? What's been wrong with me all this time that I've been letting you do this? Yeah. Now, one of the things about me is I'm accustomed to having narcissists in my life. Mm. Right? I'm not gonna name any names. No, right. But I'm 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 accustomed yeah. to having narcissists in my life. And so they ran me. There was a point, there was for so long, I never felt like I could make my own decisions. Mm. Had my own thoughts. Yeah. I was I, I felt like I knew I was that that in the inside, right? But I never felt like I was empowered to make my own decisions. I felt like I had one leader from one leader to another to another. And then 2020 happened. And I no longer wanted to be anybody else's second. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's easy to be second. It's a lot of people watching, right, that play second because it's comfortable, because that's what they're used to, because they're afraid that if they step up or step out, that they're going to lose people, lose them. Because you don't because they don't deserve you anyway. That's the thing. If if people will walk out of your life for prioritizing you, they don't deserve you. That's so good. Oh, that's so good. I'm thinking because at the opposite end of that, if we're still going up these steps, is to get your joy. Yeah. Yeah. Like at the end of forgiveness, at the end of acknowledgement, at the end of all of these things, get your joy. Like, don't feel guilty about having that joy. Because yeah. I think a lot of us have felt guilty in, well, I once was, and I once did, and mm -hmm. I once this, and I once wasn't, so can I even do, can I even, yes, you can. Yeah. Like, you literally can. No matter what has happened, no matter what you did, no matter what went down, you can still seek. And not even seek, you can, you can seek it, but you can still have Joy. Really, really be patient with this. I know it's difficult. I'm not ever undermining the difficulty in being patient with the desire for intimacy because we all have it. Yeah. We all want to share our intimacy with others, but we want it to be protected and safe. So I love the fact that you said, like, be patient with yourself because I'm reading this book now. A lot of people have probably heard of it, Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's a dope <laughs> book, bro. I'm only on chapter two. So okay. Like, okay. Okay. But, but the book talks about building a how to build better habits and one of the things that the author talks about in the book is about becoming one percent better mm. he talks about this like and i'm not going to get too much into it but he talks about the cycling team in britain and they took every aspect of their cycling team right from tires on their bikes to the way that the suits that they wore and they they did these one percent increments of increase over time, and they won they won championships that they had never won before because of those one percent increases. Mm -hmm. And so, what he talks about is how um, we think that there's just this magical moment when things will shift, but it's it's every day choosing yourself, every day saying, "Yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to do that today. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to accept that from you today. Oh, I'm going to have an honest conversation, or I'm going to speak up for myself where I wouldn't have." And so people start to notice them little increases over time. It's not just like a, "Oh, today I'm this person, and tomorrow I'm this yeah, person." Absolutely. I'm I'm taking those steps every single day to become the person that I want to mm. become. Right. And so I think that that's ultimately. It all, he also talks about in the book too, we have these goals and we base our habits and our lives off of these goals mm -hmm. as opposed to the type of people, the ident The goals are based off of outcome. We want to see something, right? Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to the identity goals, right? I'm doing things, I'm doing the things that I'm doing because of the person that I want to become, right? And that's super important. So it started to make those little bitty steps over time to become the person that you want to become. So if you are struggling right now with being with not being authentic, mm -hmm. then every day take a little step 
to become more authentic, to tell more of your truth, because your truth is your superpower. That's what I was going to say earlier. You're preaching here. This, your truth is your superpower. Uh, we talked about how I was a church boy, mm -hmm. right? And I had to hide parts of myself for sure. a really long time because I didn't feel like I would be accepted. Yeah. And then I started to realize, oh, and then I also, I'm a college dropout, right? And so that's a, that has always, working in corporate America, being a college dropout is something that, you mm -hmm. know, has always been frowned upon. Yeah, Nobody for really sure. knew. For sure. And then I started to realize how, impo how impactful, how empowering my story is for other people. I have ADD, right? And so other people struggle with ADD. And, and when I started reading about it and learning about all of the impacts that it has to our to my daily life, yeah. I started to share that more and starts because I noticed that it happens with other people too. I noticed that other people deal with the same things that I deal with. And so because of that, I started to understand the power of my story. But it took me just really learning about me. I, I usually end my conversations with advice. I ask the person to give advice, but because the entire conversation was centered in advice, I will close it with don't forget grace. Yeah. At the end of the day, don't forget grace. Grace in the midst of navigating, grace in the midst of boundaries, grace in the midst of finding that joy, grace in the midst of those 1% increments. Like grace, because you really have to make sure that you are okay. Foundationally, you have to be okay. And what does that look like for you? That's going to be a byproduct of a, of a lot of grace because yeah. you're going to make mistakes. You're going to go backwards a few times. You're going to do things that are not indicative of the person you woke up saying you were going to be that day. And that is oh. Okay, 1% better. Anyways, I will see you guys next week. Keep creating space. Peace.